Welcome to the Nonprofit Founders Club, where founders who have said, I have my 501c3, now what? Begins building the nonprofit they envisioned and helping the people they are called to serve, all without being the sole funder. Welcome to the Nonprofit Founders Club. We are in a series about social media and the new nonprofit. We've been establishing a social media presence and defining our strategy and purpose. Today, we are going through the donor journey for social media, and we're going to start talking content. All right, let's talk about what the donor journey is first. The donor journey is the steps an organization defines that move a potential donor to being an actual donor. On social media, these steps go from attracting potential donors to retaining donors. So why do we need to use the donor journey on social media? The donor journey helps us define the content we will create and move our organizational fundraising and social media goals forward. When we keep the donor journey top of mind, posting on social media isn't that difficult. And often, we are never without an idea. All right, so let's talk about the donor journey on social media. So for social media, there are four stages a person goes through to become a donor. We start with attracting our ideal donor. Then we have posts that help connect those people to our cause. Next, we transform or convert the people we have attracted and connected with to actual donors. Finally, we make them part of our community to retain them as donors. So let's talk in more detail about those four stages. The first one is attract. This stage is where you will begin finding and attracting those who are most likely to give to your cause. This is your ideal donor. If you haven't done the ideal donor exercise, I strongly recommend you do that before anything else. And you can find it in the Nonprofit Founders Club Facebook group. I will put a link to it in the show notes. All right. It's important to know and understand who your ideal donors are. You can't attract who you don't know. And attracting starts with subcategories of awareness and authority. So let's go deeper. With awareness. Awareness is when your posts make your ideal donor understand what your organization is about. This content that makes your ideal donor aware your organization exists and what you do. So some examples, storytelling posts, tell your founder story in short form. This is a powerful story to be getting out to your people. Beliefs, and these are nonprofit specific beliefs. It's usually your universal belief statement. And so it will be something like, we believe children shouldn't live in fear and neglect. It is so deeply rooted in our mission or in our organization that, and then you would tell a story where your organization lived out these beliefs, and you're going to gather stories from your programs if you have some up and running. Another example on social media, we believe no one should go to bed hungry. It is so deeply rooted in our organization that our food distribution is expanding. We will be able to get 100 people off our wait list, wait list with this expansion. And then you would just have a picture of physical expansion coming or a picture of a client getting services. Now, maybe it's not an expansion because you're, you're new, but 
maybe you're going to start offering services. That can be powerful too. Another awareness post could be inspirational. What life looks like if your organization succeeds? What does the world look like? What does your community look like if you succeed? What the nonprofit stands for? What do you believe? What what are you standing up for? Those can be powerful posts. Your values. You should have mission, vision, and values. So let's talk about your values. And you're going to pick those values that you know are similar to your ideal donor. That's very important. Don't skip that. How is your nonprofit different from the alternatives? There are other things people in the situation that you are helping solve can do. It may be another nonprofit. It could be just different solutions that are out there. So how is what you do? How is your solution different from everyone else? This, these are good posts to put out there, especially when you are new. And then there are recognized days of the month, weeks, or months that can be specific to your cause. The blog Club News has help with these specific topics, and that is at w.founders.club. It's different. It's .club, and under the tab Club News, and there are some very specific posts that will help you with these topics. All right, next, we are still under the attract pillar, but we're now moving to the subcategory of authority. These posts show your ideal donor why your nonprofit is the organization that can solve your cause's problem. Why should a donor partner with your your nonprofit to solve the problem? What makes you different from other nonprofits doing similar things? So some examples, maybe education about your cause. Did you know statistics? So you could put up a post that's just a graphic that says, did you know? And then in the comment, talk about the statistics of, of your cause. You can share articles related to your cause. This can be different things going on. Maybe it's legislation. Maybe it's an article that someone published talking about the need or like opioids. You can find a lot of information about how they're exploding and how dangerous they are. You can start sharing some of that if you are maybe a a recovery organization. You can also do posts that inspire. So what does the world look like with your organization in it? What does the world look like without your organization? So these can help inspire people. So paint the picture of what it looks like if people go through your program. How are their lives changed? And what does the world look like without your organization? These can go darker and some organizations choose not to go dark and that's okay. You can still raise money. It's not a problem. But for some, it makes sense. If it's kind of who you are as an organization, it may make sense for you to start talking about what the world looks like without your organization. You know, There are, you know, 20 abused women a month who aren't going to be able to come and get shelter. That could be something. All right. The next thing is thought leadership. So how does your nonprofit uniquely solve the problem? What is wrong with the way others want to solve the problem? These make really good videos. So you could go on and do a a video or a live and talk about 
how you uniquely solve the problem and and why what others do doesn't really help solve the problem. Those can be very powerful too. All right, now let's move on to the next pillar, which is connect. Donors donate to the organizations that align with their values and beliefs. Above and beyond anything else that anyone may tell you about the motivations of donors, I know this to be true, that donors donate to organizations that align with their values and beliefs. So connect is where you are going to post content that lets your ideal donor know you understand them and the two of you are working for the same purpose. You let them know that you understand them and their values. You are pointing out things that you have in common. And so one of the things underneath Connect is your ideal donor. And so ideal donor posts simply start calling out who your ideal donor is how they identify themselves as it relates to your cause, their beliefs and their frustrations they face as it relates to your cause. You are looking for people who engage with these posts. When you have this type of post nailed, your organic reach will soar. You also train the algorithm who your ideal donor is and who to use for its lookalike audience. And again, we're going to get into lookalike audiences a little bit later in the series, but they are so important. And training that algorithm for who that lookalike audience is, is really important. All right, so let's talk about some examples of posts for the ideal donor. So you're looking at identity posts. So things like, I am a, so if you are a rescue, I am a lover of animals. This would be something that your ideal donor would identify as. You know, I am a compassionate person. This may be something your ideal donor relates to. And, you know, maybe it's a homeless organization or an organization that fights homelessness you know, I could see where those donors might have that identity of being a compassionate person. Maybe it's, I am a helper. This can be just about any organization where maybe you've identified your ideal donor likes to help. They like to do things. This can also be great for volunteers. So it just depends on what you're doing. The next thing is beliefs. And this is of the ideal donor that the nonprofit has in common. So you are looking for beliefs, universal beliefs even, that you both have in common. Beliefs about the clients you serve that you have in common. That kind of thing. The motivation, that can be a good post. And so what motivates your ideal donor to donate to your cause? Talk about that. Connection stories. Stories are so important in fundraising. And so what connects your nonprofit to your donors? You may, once you start getting donors, you may start asking them, why do you give to this nonprofit? That's going to help you. Talk about those things. All right, the next pillar is transform. Transform focuses on moving followers to a deeper connection with you. So you've already connected with them. You've already figured out who the ideal donors are. And so now we're going to, going to start looking at how to move them or convert them or transforming them into volunteers, donors, or just simply advocates for your cause. Those are important too. So the next subcategory is action. Actions are both microconversions and promotions. Microconversions are small, 
low commitment actions that train your followers to do something. This can be clicks that get engagement or steps that move people into your donor funnel. Promotions include donation campaigns or a one-time ask for in-kind or a monetary donation. They can include advertising for upcoming events or signing up for your donor magnet. So some post examples are promotions. So if you've got an event coming up, this is the time to do your, your promotions. Donation drives. So maybe you would like some in-kind. And in case you don't know, in-kind are the material things that you can get in, that people donate, that you can get in, that help with your line item budget. You can also ask for monetary donations. And sometimes you don't have to really ask for anything, but maybe you have a free resource or a service that you would like to offer. And so this would be considered a promotion. The next thing are the micro conversions. Now, these are the little things. Like I said, they are small, low commitment actions that are training your followers to do something when they see your post. So micro conversions can be something like click here to take to schedule a tour, join a group. So if you have a Facebook group for your nonprofit, you know, then you're inviting them to the group and you know click here to join. If you have a mailing list or a newsletter, a donor magnet, anything like that, now's a good time to do that micro conversion and just get them to click to sign up. And then of course, click a link to your website. And that can be anything on your website. Just doing that action of clicking. That's really our goal when we're looking at micro conversions. All right, next under this pillar is advocate. Advocate posts will motivate your followers to share your content with others. They will begin talking about your nonprofit's good works in other groups and in their own circles. Advocates don't have to be donors. I want you to understand that. You, they don't have to be a donor to be your advocate. They can talk about the great things and the great organization you are and never be a donor, but they are valuable because they bring in donors. So, and not just donors. When they're talking about how great your organization is, they can bring in volunteers too. And they can bring in other advocates. So if awareness is something that you're really needing, go heavy on some advocate posts so that you can start getting people to, to like, comment, and share those posts to their network. All right, some examples in case you're a little fuzzy. Reviews. So if you have any really great reviews, either from clients or from donors. Those are good things to share. Any testimonials, this is usually from clients. I guess you could have some testimonials from donors saying what a great experience it was or, or why they donate, that can happen. Services in use. So let's talk, you know, talk about your services, talk about what you're doing. Then you can have some volunteer rec recognition or spotlights. So you put somebody's, put a volunteer's face up and a little bit about that volunteer and why they volunteer. That can be a great thing. And make sure you tag the person so that their friends and followers on Facebook or on social media will see it, which will take the reach out even further. And then once you start getting corporate sponsorships and things like that, you can do corporate spotlights and recognition. And again, you tag the company, you tag the employees that, that are um, you're spotlighting, if it's maybe a group of volunteers, whatever it is, it's tagging takes it out to further. People see it in their feeds. 
All right. Last pillar, retain. Retain posts help keep donors informed, give them recognition, and help keep them donating. So we've got a few things in this category that you can pick from when you start thinking about your posts. So the first thing is updates. And updates are just like they sound. They keep donors informed of things going on in the nonprofit, impacts the nonprofit is making, and fundraising campaign updates. Those are very important. Some examples are obviously fundraising. If you've just had a fundraiser, update your people with how much money you raised. Did you meet goal? If you didn't meet goal, that's okay. You can tell them that. Then if you have any new services or you're starting services, this is a good time to introduce those things. What is your nonprofit up to? What is something that you have been doing in the past month towards getting up and running? Maybe you have your 501c3 or maybe you don't. Maybe that's your post. You know, hey guys, look, it just came in the mail. We are an official 501c3. This means your donations are now tax deductible. So that's something that you, that you can do. So all these different milestones that you can put out there, anytime that you have a new board member join, take a picture, put it up there, give the board member a spotlight. These are updates. These are things that people are, are interested in. And of course, give an update on a client story. So maybe and this may be a little bit later down the road, but if you put out a client story and it's not quite finished, update that client story. Talk about, you know, this happened a couple of years ago. Well, here's what happened. You know, here's where that person is now. Those are great things too. All right, moving on to check presentations. This is something nonprofits have been doing for, I think, ever since the social media came into being. And so anytime you get a check presented to your organization, get a picture taken and post it with tags of the people and or company that gave the donation. This helps others know they aren't the sole funders in your nonprofit. And that's something that is very valuable. Next is a donor spotlight or recognition. So if you have donors reach out to them. And even if they're their friends and family, reach out to them and ask them why they donate and provide a picture of the donor. And that's really all you need for donor spotlight posts. And these, this recognition can be very powerful. Recognition posts can be shout out posts to volunteers, donors, and advocates that have gone over and beyond for the organization. And like I said, tag the person and it goes out to their people. Now, so overlooked, but so needed is the thank you. Thank you posts are obvious, but they are often overlooked. Now, these posts will be general thank you posts as opposed to the donor recognition posts that are specific to a, a particular donor. You should have a general thank you post at least once before asking and again after you have received results from a recent ask. This helps avoid the ATM feeling donors can get when you ask for donations too free frequently. And what I mean by the ATM feeling is that it just feels like a transaction to the donor. They there, There's no meat. It's just, we need money, give me money. We need money, give me money. And, and that turns donors off. So when you start thanking them, like I said, before asking, and then again, after you've asked, it really helps them feel like they're, they're still connected to you. All right. Using the donor journey for social media helps you find, attract, and move people to becoming donors. 
It also helps you focus on the right things so you use less energy with greater results. Try these things we have talked about and let me know how they work for you inside the Nonprofit Founders Club Facebook group. That's it for the Nonprofit Founders Club podcast. Hit subscribe so you won't miss the next episode. In the meantime, keep building your nonprofit so you can help those you are called to serve.